<laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hi, guys. Oh, it's good to see you both. Hi, Mace. Rebecca, how are you? <laughs> oh, I'm hanging in there, brother. <laughs> Man, I miss you. I, I miss you, too. You. I haven't seen you since, you know, we did. You went to your dad's movie and the movie about your dad and your dad. And, and I know you've been doing a lot of stuff. I've been keeping track of your trips to in Alaska and stuff. And well, I've it's, been seeing you on TV, Eco Challenge, and it's been super cool to reconnect with Travis. And I feel like I'm like the whole family's getting back together again. It's been yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Good, Rebecca. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, yeah, let's just hop right in. So I, okay. um, uh, first I got to tell my, my uh, meeting Rebecca story. I was 16 years old. Uh, Dad brought me out to Moab. Uh, there was an adventure camp organized by Isaac <coughs> and another uh, early day adventure racer who was on my dad's team for a couple of the eco challenges and maybe i don't know did do, did he ever race with you rebecca on the same team or did you guys just kind of know each other yeah mace and i were not on the same no i mean team. i isaac uh, uh oh isaac yeah, yeah we we raced together um yeah and he was not a lot but um i definitely looked up to him he was a few years ahead of me in experience and in adventure racing and so it was kind of an honor i was kind of a newbie on that group of instructors i was I was pretty yeah. young, um, not as young as you, but pretty young in the adventure racing scene. Yeah. So it was an honor to hang out with all those people. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was late 90s. Isaac's putting on this camp, you know, people pay and they come and they uh, hike and navigate and mountain bike and do rope stuff. And uh, dad was, was kind of one of the honorary coaches and I just got to come and hang out and Rebecca was uh, was the ropes person because uh, she had a, a big background in rock climbing and uh, big wall climbing. So she rigged up the uh, rappels and Tyrolean traverses and uh, you know it was it was awesome and, and Rebecca I can still just I can picture like you know diving out on the Tyrolean traverse and you're you know standing there watching us and encouraging us and um, really from from that point forward um, it, you for me Rebecca were kind of one of the uh, you know mentors and just people to look up to as as an athlete you know first as an adventure racer i mean you guys had all those great teams in the late 90s and early 2000s and and then just watching you um you know grow through your career and how do you make a you know a business of being an athlete sort of and uh you know and then how how do you how do you help people so um thanks thanks for doing awesome all that. i'm thinking well and i'm thinking back to that camp i was um at that time i was yeah i was a rock climber i was a dirt bag you know living out of a truck when it wasn't cool to live out of a truck and literally <laughs> i had no home address and isaac let me stay in a mobile home trailer that his family owned um he let me use that space in moab as a little bit of a crash pad so for me to get invited to you know, do rock climbing and teach people rock climb and actually get paid to do what I was um, doing in the dirt all the time, but to get paid. And like, that was one of my first real jobs as an athlete. And I was just like, this is too good to be true. I mean, <laughs> awesome. and I wasn't getting paid a lot, but I got yeah. paid to show up and teach some people. And I had a roof over my head for a minute. And so Isaac was really um, essential in helping me. You know, I committed to that lifestyle because I wanted to do my sport, um, but I wasn't making any money. I didn't have a home. And so it was pretty cool to get fed and paid and have a roof over my head for a couple of days during that camp and meet all of you guys. Yeah. Didn't you have a junk car? <laughs> I did have did a you? junk car. <laughs> 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 um, and my only regret in life is selling that Bronco. I had a 1975 Ford Bronco. Um, I had rebuilt it myself. And really, it was the only car I could afford. I knew I wanted, wanted a truck to live on the road. But, it, you know, so I had to buy an old beater truck and fix it up myself. Whereas now, you know, hashtag van life and all that. People <laughs> exactly. are buying van's more expensive uh -huh. than my house um so i was kind of the opposite way i bought an old beater truck and you know there was nowhere to sleep in it but that was my home and that was my home on wheels for a long time to be able to climb and adventure race and and eventually find where i wanted to call home in idaho yeah oh well, good <laughs> but so, i sold the truck i'm bummed i sold the truck <laughs> yeah well some, sometimes you got to sell trucks on huh, dad yeah yeah. Well, uh, Travis has mine. 
<laughs> yeah, I've got dad's truck. Unfortunately, dad can't drive, but uh, we kept the truck in the family. So uh, awesome. yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll get it up to Idaho for uh, Rebecca's private Idaho uh, in September. That's uh, of course the gravel yeah. bike ride that Rebecca puts on and uh, I'm pumped for it. Uh, definitely become one of the marquee events of the gravel uh, circuit. So, uh, <laughs> so Rebecca, as I was kind of, you know, brushing up on my, on my Rebecca history, you know, going back through your book and thinking about the Blood Road film and, you know, the different kinds of races that you've done over the years, um, I, I sort of, in my mind at least, I, I kind of came up with this idea that maybe t today we're talking with sort of the, the Rebecca 3.0. And I don't know, I don't know if this is true or not, but I like maybe 1.0 is like you said, kind of that nineties, maybe early two thousands where adventure racing, whitewater rafting, um, you know, riverboarding the Grand Canyon, big wall climbing. You were kind of doing all that stuff. Like you said, living in the car before living in the car was cool. Uh, and then, uh, Rebecca 2.0, I, I think of that maybe as, you know, kind of the Leadville 100 years, like you shift your focus to mountain biking, uh, win a bunch of Leadville 100s, win the 24 hour worlds, um, you know, and a whole, obviously a bunch of other, uh, bike races, but those are probably the biggest ones that, that come to mind. Um, and then, uh, you know, you were a full on pro athlete and bigger sponsorships and that kind of stuff, uh, probably living more in a house and less in a vehicle. And then uh, Rebecca 3.0, and, and again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I sort of see like, you know, kind of around the time of your film coming out and just that personal exploration for you, maybe a shift to a little more just sort of, uh, you know, you're still an athlete, that's kind of still leading the way, but maybe a little more of an like outward focus of like impact, helping people, um, you know, inspiring, teaching, giving back. I just, that's kind of what I've seen here in the last uh, few years. And you're still racing, you know, you got the I Did Ride Trail Invitational. I definitely want to talk about that some, you know, the Dirty Kansas XL, um, but maybe a bit of a, a shift there. What do you think? Am I, is that all true? And how yeah. would you characterize like that journey, especially on the personal side? I think that's really astute that you're picking up on something that's been developing me for years. I mean, I, and I'll make one point, you know, people ask me, and this is where, you know, your dad Mace is motivation for me. People ask me all the time, Oh, when are you going to retire from being an athlete? And the answer is never because it's who I am. It's, it's how I connect with my family, with my community, with myself, with the earth. It's yep. what I do. And so I will never retire as an athlete. And, and Mace, you know, you're living proof of that is that it's part of who we are in our DNA. And I know, Travis, you were brought up that way as a young kid, just like getting on the bike, going hiking, your dad's taking you everywhere. Yep. Because it's not a thing we do. It is who we are. And yep. so yep. absolutely that, you know, never, I'm, you know, <laughs> until the day I die, I'm going to be an athlete um, because it's, it's who I am. And, but you're, you're, you're right. Is that we're always in a constant evolution. And I like the versions that you're coming up with. You know, when I turned 50, I, I wrote a post and I'm like, this is Rebecca 5.0, yeah. you know, and now I'm on <laughs> Rebecca 5.2. Because yep. <laughs> I hope as humans, we're constantly evolving and learning and growing. And, you know, you don't figure it all out at 25 or 35 or 45, and then you're done. Yep. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, and, but there are some distinct periods, like you said, and, and really Blood Road, which was, you know, the ride I did on the Ho Chi Minh Trail to find where my dad died, a 1200 mile ride through Southeast Asia. You know, that was a big turning point in my life where my career as an athlete really came together on the hardest expedition of my life, um, yep. physically and emotionally. And it's this five years since that ride, you know, of course we made a film, I connected with my family, yep. um, but I'm just now, really I've spent the last five years articulating sort of what I stand for, who I am, yeah. you know, um, what are my sort of, what's my purpose in life? What are my navigational guardrails, handrails as I call them. Yeah, and yeah. really blood road was the impetus for me to really articulate and understand what I've been doing my whole life. When people yeah. are like, why do you go do these crazy things? And I'm like, I don't know. I just have to. Yeah. And you know, now you know. I understand. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, Rebecca, you know, when you told me about your your movie and, and your dad and stuff up in at the new place in Idaho and it made me cry. Yeah. And and it made me cry when I went to see the movie and as you tell the story right now, it makes me cry again, you know. Just unbelievable, you know, and <laughs> You know, your dad was a, you know, great guy, and, and, you know, I wish I could have known him personally. Well, what's been really special for me is, like, seeing your guys' relationship. I've got a few close friends who, father-daughter, um, father-son, you know, that have some really close relationships, and it's been, you know, obviously I'm sad my dad's not here and we didn't have that, but it's been so amazing for me to witness that through people like you guys because you know when I did Blood Road and I went to the place where my dad died and you know I was only three when it happened everybody said oh that must have been amazing closure and I'm, every time I said that people said that word it made my skin crawl because I said I kept saying no no this is a discovery this is yeah. an opening yeah I'm getting to know me I'm getting to know my dad I'm connecting with yep. my mom in another way and yep. so that has was absolutely an awakening for me five years ago of connecting with my family even though he's not here and yeah. he's teaching me all you know yeah what's next in this version 5.2 or 3.0 yeah. or yeah. whatever it is so mace i mean watching you and travis and your relationship um has been really special for me because even though my dad's not here, we all contribute to the people around us. I've got nieces, I've got people yep. I ride with, you know. Yep. So we're mentors or parents or teachers all to each other 